is up, weather enthusiasts. I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so this is the situation we have right here, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the big day. We are looking at a really big tornado outbreak going on, ladies and gentlemen. We have the first wave of it happening in Iowa and Illinois in the afternoon, and then we have a second wave happening at night in Missouri and Arkansas right here. We have a 15% hatch risk for both these moderate risk areas. The, temp uh, the 10% finally fused together, so now basically this area right here is now under a 10% tornado risk. The wind risk right here is still at 30%. Hail risk is still at 30% hatch right there, so no nothing new there. However, uh, I want to go ahead and read a little bit of this real quickly. Tornadoes, severe storm gusts, and large hail are possible today to, and, and tonight from the upper Great Lakes to central Texas. Tornado por uh, potential is focused today over parts of Iowa and Illinois this afternoon, especially, and especially tonight over parts of the Ozarks and Arklatex region. Now, for those of you who are just new and are, want to know what's going on with this, basically the reason this moderate risk is down here in the south is because we are looking at a potentially major outbreak of long-tracked, violent nighttime tornadoes, ladies and gentlemen. And nighttime tornadoes are much worse than daytime tornadoes because you cannot see them coming. And a lot, especially considering how late this is going to be starting, a lot of people are going to be asleep and may not be even able to hear all this stuff going on. So... With that being said, we're going to go ahead and t uh, talk a little bit about what's going on with all this. Basically, what's going on with first, what's going on, what we know, what we don't know, everything like that. So, here is what we know what's going to happen. What we know is going to happen is that we are at least getting a severe tornado outbreak, potentially really bad, down in Arkansas, Missouri, especially at nighttime. We know that. That's pretty much given at this point. However, what we don't know is how bad is it's going to be in Iowa and Illinois. The reason we don't know is because there's a pretty decent cap going on. For those of you who do not know what cap is, it's basically the stable air underneath the cape, which is the unstable air that we have where we have a lot of cape above and then a little bit of a cap below. That's called a loaded gun. But in this case, we don't have really a loaded gun. We literally have a loaded gun with the safety on. And if that safety fails, it's not going to be a shot that's fired. It's going to be an entire artillery barrage. So... That's what we don't know. We don't know how bad it's going to get in Iowa, although recent models in the last few hours have shown some rather disturbing things going on. So this is the 12Z we have, the HRRR or HER, whichever you want to call it. Here's what happens. We have things starting to pop off around 4 to 5 o'clock. So this is what we got right here. And first you see this, and then boom, 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 boom. All these are supercells, by the way. And... There's not enough forcing for a squall line to, uh, to form and potentially kill these things off. So it's going to be mostly uh, supercell driven. And that's really bad because that has the potential of bringing some very long tracked violent tornadoes. I've been talking to some people about this and they said that if this cap breaks, we are looking at potentially EF4, EF3, like a lot of violent tornadoes with this. And a lot of these are going to be long track too, through Iowa, into Illinois, and potentially Wisconsin as well. If we take a look at Wisconsin, they are, southern Wisconsin's under an enhanced risk right there, including Madison right there. So it's not out of the question that some of these tornadoes, if they do happen, cross into Wisconsin and all that stuff, which that's not good at all right there. So that's the 12Z, and you're probably telling me, Patrick, that's just one run. What's the big idea with this? Well, we're going to go ahead and next pull up the 13Z, and, le and let me show you what happens. The ex Pretty much the exact same thing happens right there, although it is a little bit of a lesser scale because the cape in this run is around like two to 3,000 joules per kilogram. Now, the, if we go to the 14Z, this run, ha I last time I looked, is around three to 4,000 joules per kilogram. Take a look at what happens. Boom. A lot of a lot of supercells going on, and then we have the squall line forming later tonight that moves into Illinois. So for quite a while, it's going to be supercell city out there. So everyone needs to take that very seriously. This is what we have next coming up. Boom, 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 boom. Similar to the 12Z, a lot of supercells firing up. The squall line starts developing late into the night, into the overnight hours, and. That's what we have right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the soundings from uh, from all this. Let's go ahead and take a look at the cape real quickly just to show you what I'm talking about. This is what we have from the wrap model right here. As you can see, we're looking at 4,000 joules per kilogram of cape. The problem is there is some cap right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at this sounding right here. This right here. So as you can see, actually the sounding, according to the surface, has a cap of 5,000, sorry, cape of 5,000 joules per kilogram right there. 
SRH is pretty good. The cap is around 29. Yeah, if we're looking at 5,000 cape and only like a 59 uh, cap right there, that's easily going to break right there. And we're looking at a tornado right there. This is what we uh, what we got. The lapse rate's pretty impressive right there. Directional shear is absolutely off the charts right there. Everything looks better than what happened on Friday except the cap. Depending on when and if that cap breaks, and remember, that cap will break explosively, it does, will depend on how bad it is up in the Midwest. Now, how bad is it going to be in the Deep South? Well, it's pretty much given that it's this is a, going to a really pretty much happen at this point. It, storms are going to start initiating around 1 o'clock in the morning or so. So about this time right here, if we take a look at the supercell composite for a lot of these areas, we're cracking 16 in a lot of uh, we're cracking 16 in a lot of these areas. I want to go ahead and pull up one of these soundings in Arkansas right here just to see what's going on with that. All right, so here's the sounding we have right here. Uh, there's more speed shear than directional shear than there was. There's still decent cape around 1800 joules per kilogram. Cape does not have to be as much in the deep south than it does in the Midwest for big stuff to happen. SRH is pretty good. Shear is pretty good right here. Potential hazard type tornado. EF3 is not out of the question. So that's basically the situation we have here with all of this. So this is the latest information we have for you. Depending on what happens to that cap will depend on if we see a massive outbreak of tornadoes in Iowa, in Illinois, in Missouri. But we do know that something bad is going to happen in Arkansas, Missouri, southern Missouri, all those areas. Because after that, the cap's going to erode and all hell may break loose down there. We'll continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps me out and helps me make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.